Everyone is asking the question, what's going on with Tennessee offense? What's wrong with Nico Iamaliava? I don't think the answer to that question is super concise. I also don't think it is all the way on Nico Iamaliava. We'll talk about that right now. Tennessee fans, make sure to dial in right here. We have had a lot of y'all subscribe to the On3 YouTube channel since this show just started. Uh, we appreciate you being doubted. If you have not yet subscribed, no time like the present. Massive spot this upcoming Saturday with Alabama rolling into town. This show, the hard count brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks. Got a square that we like a lot in this very game a little bit later in this segment. Code hard count, $5 in lineups, gets you $50 in promo funds. Also, just full transparency, great way to support the show. Every time you use code hard count, the folks at Price Picks, they see it. They see y'all being college football sickos and riding with us on the show. So we appreciate you for that. So everybody wants to blame Nico Iamaliava. Oh, he must be overrated. He must not be who we thought he was coming out of high school. And while I think there's some blame to be had whenever you're the quarterback, kind of comes with the job. Again, I don't know that it's all the way on number eight when it comes to what the offense hasn't done effectively. I think the issues you're seeing with Tennessee's offense from the lack of production in the passing game to just the overall lack of production and scoring points in the last couple of games, I think it's a collection of errors. Like what, what happens is, you see a pass be inaccurate, and then you see uh, the play not blocked all the way correctly, and, th and then you see uh, the receiver drop a pass. And so what happens is all those errors add up, and then you come away with the idea that, oh, well, the Tennessee offense is struggling, and then who's responsible or who's potentially the most impactful or important player in an offense having success? The quarterback. So you say, huh, it must be on Nico. Well, has Nico played perfect? Absolutely not. But again, I think what you're seeing offensively is a collection of errors that are adding up to keep Tennessee from overall reaching their ultimate potential. Like the offensive line, for my money at least, against Florida, there's a couple of plays there where you're like, hey, we got we to gotta help number eight out a little bit here. Like we, It's a young quarterback, so he's still getting his feet wet. And, you know, He's getting acclimated to playing SEC-level football himself. Like We got to do everything we can up front to give him a clean pocket. Also, I said this a couple of times. I said this after the reaction, uh, or during our reaction, rather, to the Florida game. There's some shots downfield, man, where if you're a wide receiver, is it an easy catch to make? No, but that's why you're on scholarship. Like That's why, that's why NIL is a thing here. That's why you have a certain amount of dollars hitting your bank account because of NIL. Got to make some of those plays downfield. Again, maybe not routine catches. Maybe some of them could have been a little bit more accurate. But at the end of the day, man, like those are the plays that we got to make if we want to score in the 30s, if we want to help our young quarterback out, build his confidence, make a defense have to play us differently. Because from what I can tell, they are giving the Tennessee offense a different look than what they've had previously. A lot of heavy boxes, a lot of teams essentially daring the Tennessee offense to beat them downfield. They haven't yet, but haven't doesn't mean that it's not possible for this team. So here's the conversation we had around Oregon offensively early on in the year, and I feel the same way I do about Tennessee as I did Oregon early on. Oregon early on had what I would call issues, not problems. I think that's the same thing for Tennessee. An issue is something you can work out. We have the resources, we have the pieces to get it done, but right now, for whatever reason, we're like an orchestra. Someone's playing the wrong note. Someone's out of rhythm. And so it makes the whole song look bad. And as a result, it makes the composer look bad. It makes Nico look bad. Is it all the way on Nico that we're missing a block here or we're out of time there? We're dropping past there? No. But again, when you are the face of the offense, as Nico Iamaliava is, there is going to be someone that has to be blamed. And he knows what he signed up for. He gets it. But going back to what I said, I don't think there's problems or I'm not ready to say at least there's problems just yet now if they go out and look lackluster against Alabama and Nico throws multiple picks and they you know just struggle to throw the football at all okay let's have a different discussion but as of right now do you you know do you have a bunch of first round picks across your offense remains to be seen I think there's some guys that definitely have NFL futures I don't know there's a ton of guys that are going to the first round necessarily right now on this offense could happen but that's just from what I'm what I'm gauging so far. But again, I think there's a lot of talent on this offense to still get it done. Like Nico Iamaliava, he's a redshirt freshman. This is his first experience playing college football. It takes some time. This stuff is hard. He's benefiting from the redshirt, but at the same time, like we got to understand, this isn't a thing where you just, you know, hit the ground running and you are the best version of yourself 
from the jump. Like he's still progressing. He's still trending upward. And so going back to what I was saying, I think there's the talent on this team, on this offense, to ultimately get it done and make some of those plays. So just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't. I would also say this, speaking to the Tennessee offense, I lean a lot more towards the idea that it just has to be tinkered with as opposed to you got to go out and like reinvent this offense. Now, hear me clearly. I'm not implying that I know the solution to what's going on. I'm not implying that I am in that building. and know all the X's and O's. I will say this, though. Uh, I trust the guy who is. <laughs> I trust Josh Heupel and what he has done offensively. I think his resume speaks for itself. Last year, everyone was throwing rocks at Hendon Hooker. And, or not Hendon Hooker, excuse me. Everyone's throwing rocks at Joe Milton saying he wasn't Hendon Hooker. Everyone's speaking down to the offense a year ago. That was an offense that still scored in the 30s. Like Josh Heupel has proven he is going to find a way to get his offense to produce points. So what they have right now, I think it's also worth noting, maybe you don't have to be as aggressive offensively as you have been in the past. Maybe Josh Heupel is calling the game a little bit differently because he has a defense for the first time in four years in Knoxville. He can win a game by scoring in the 20s. That's not just like theoretically. Like, like he has done that where he wins a game scoring in the 20s. So all that's to say now, is it time to panic? I don't know. If you have concerns, if you have reservations, that's totally fair. Like, we, we've seen enough on the field now to say, uh, I don't know about that. But if you're telling me this is what the Tennessee offense is going forward, I would fight you a little bit on that. Now, will there be a team that go out and score 40 a game like the 2022 season? You'd hope so if you're a Tennessee fan. I'm not ready to say that just yet. But again, I think with the quarterback you have, with his physical giftings, and what you have on the perimeter, if they can reach their peak at the right time, they're going to have a chance to do some really exciting things. So again, not a finished product. I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet. You're more than welcome to if things look horrible against Alabama, and we'll talk about it together. But right now, the fact that you got Dylan Sampson carrying the mail and the way that he has done it at a really high level, uh, I'd feel great about the ability to fall back on the run game, play good defense, and uh, let our quarterback eventually get acclimated and play his best football. You feel great, like I said, having number six in the backfield for you. So the prize pick square that we love right now, Dylan Sampson, his number for Saturday against Bama is set at 99 and a half rush yards. We will take the more there. We will laugh all the way. I expect them to be pretty run heavy. Tennessee, just that's kind of who they've been to this point in the year. That's who Josh Heupel wants to be, period. Like whether he's got Hen and Hooker, Joe Milton, or Nico Imaliev at quarterback, he wants to run the football. So with that being said, we will take Dylan Sampson with the more 99 and a half rush yards and feel pretty good about doing it. Also, keep an eye on Nico Iamaliava and his rush yards total. Would be curious to see where that's at closer to game time. Keep an eye on that. Again, code hard count, $5 in lineups, $50 in promo funds over at prizepicks.com. We appreciate you being subscribed, and we appreciate you using that code. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time.